Are you looking for inspiration on a daily basis? Well, check out Deal to Heal Teas. With our inspirational teas, you're sure to find something that will inspire you. Just go to Deal to Heal Teas. Dot my Shopify dot com. That's deal to heal teas. Get some inspiration in your situation. Wear inspirational tea and be inspired all day. That's deal to heal teas at deal to heal teas dot my Shopify dot com. Hi guys, if you're enjoying this podcast, then I know you'll enjoy the Deal to Heal with E. James podcast. I'm your host, Ernest James. And on my podcast, my guests and I discuss topics and ways to help us to heal in every area of our lives. I believe that everyone can and should live a life that is whole, healed, and healthy. And therefore, I'm on a mission to help people to deal, heal, and fulfill to deal with their problems, heal from the pain, and to fulfill their purpose. So check out our podcast. We're on Google Podcasts, Spotify, or even on Audible. And if you want to watch the podcast, check us out on our YouTube channel at Deal to Heal with E. James Podcast. Until then, see you soon. Welcome to the Girl Dad Discussions Podcast with E. James. We believe that the relationship between a dad and daughter is one of the most important relationships in a woman's life. Our mission is to promote the daddy-daughter relationship by spreading the voices of girl dads to the world and give love and support to all of our dads and their daughters. Let's get to it. Let's tune in. All right, welcome, welcome, welcome to the Girl Dad Discussions Podcast. I'm your host, Ernest James, and we believe that the relationship between a father and daughter is one of the most important relationships in a woman's life. Therefore, our mission is to promote the daddy-daughter relationship by spreading the voices of girl dads to the world and give love and support to all of our dads and their daughters. If you guys haven't already, make sure that you listen, like, subscribe, and share uh, to our podcast on all of your social media platforms. Also, make sure you guys check us out on our new YouTube channel. Our YouTube channel used to be the Deal to Heal uh, with EJ's podcast alone, but now we've changed it to the Deal to Heal podcasting network on YouTube because now we offer more podcasts than just the Deal to Heal with E. James podcast. We also uh, offer um, the Girl Dad Discussions podcast as well as uh, a couple other podcasts. So you can go to Deal to Heal podcasting network on YouTube in order to uh, find out or in order to support us with our other podcasts that we have available uh, on YouTube. Um, our product of the week, as you guys know, we are a self-sustained podcast and the way that we stay on the air is by bringing you amazing products for you to purchase and that way we can uh, pay our bills. And so our product of the week is our purpose journal as well as our purpose planner because we believe you need to uh, journal in order to see where you've been and where you are now in your life as well as plan for your future. So you guys can go to Amazon and check us out with our our purpose journal and our purpose planner. Uh, Wherever you're listening or watching this podcast, the links will be in the descriptions below. So make sure you guys go and check that out, right? So, excuse me. Today, just like any other day, we are blessed with the guest, Mr. Max. How you doing? Good, sir. Thank you for having me on. I appreciate it. No problem, no problem. First of all, let me say thank you for being here because uh, you couldn't be doing anything else with anyone else, but you're here today uh, with me and my listeners. We definitely appreciate it. So, Max, I'm going to just jump right in and start off by asking you, uh, do me a favor, introduce yourself to my listeners and tell us a little bit about who you are and what it is that you do. 
Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. My name is Max Taylor. I'm 40 years old. I'm a soldier in the United States military. I've been in it for 21 years now, still going. And I'm a proud girl dad of two. Uh, my two daughters are Gabriella and Olivia. Uh, they are ages seven and two at the time of this recording. All right. All right. First of all, let me say thank you for your service. Uh, thank you. I love, <clears throat> excuse me, when I have uh, service men, uh, I, don't, I don't know if that's politically correct at this time, service persons. I don't know how you sure. want to say it. But <laughs> so my, my dad uh, served in Vietnam and <clears throat> two of my oldest sons also served. And so definitely, again, I say thank you for your service. Um, you answered two of my questions. It's going to be my first question, which is what is your daughter's names? Um, and you have two daughters. And so my very first question, Max, uh, is one I ask everybody. So my very first question, what does it mean to you to be a girl dad? Man, like it, it just means the world. Like I, I take it as it's my job to set the example day in and day out so that they grow up knowing what a man is supposed to be. And so when I read your, when I read your, your ebook and I went through the, the four core, um, it really struck a chord with me. Um, because I realize that one day they're they're going to marry a man, and um, hopefully that man is a better version than I am, just a better mm -hmm. version of me. Hopefully that's that's what they marry. It's just a better version of what their father was, and I think that's the goal: is to set that example every single day. One in how you carry yourself, two in how you treat your spouse, and then three in how you treat them. Um, that that's I think that's what it's all about. So. Yeah, yeah. And and to my listeners, um, definitely we, we're talking about the core four and we'll get a, a little bit more into it uh toward the end of the podcast. But you can get your copy of the core four ebook at ebooksbyejames.com. Again, that's ebooksbyejames.com. Um, and so you know what, and, and I, I definitely agree with you uh with that because one of the things that I, I talked about, I want to and the point I want to get across um with the ebook was even my experience with my daughter. And so my daughter, who at the time of this recording is 21, you know, so she's a young adult, but um, me and her mom was married and then we got divorced and then I got remarried. And so even my relationship with her mom and even with uh, my relationship with her stepmom, I want to be the example of what that should look like. You know, even though me and her mom was no longer together, I wanted to make sure that I continue to be respectful, continue to not call her out of her name, no matter whatever disagreements that we were having, you know, things like that. And then even with her stepmom, I still showing her that same respect, you know, never calling her her name, being careful with how I treated her, you know, not that I would treat her wrong anyway, but treating her right, not only because she deserved it, but also, again, being that example, you know, on, on both stages um, for my daughter, because that was important to me. So that was the one of the, the things that I was uh, wanted to, well, it was one of the things I wanted to come across, you know, as being that example with my daughter, because who knows, one day she may get, you know, married and she may get divorced, you know, and so I wanted her to see that if that was her uh, plight, you know, that it didn't have to be a negative one. It still could be positive and co-parenting and, and all of those things. Um, but so not enough about me. <laughs> Going back to you, Max. Um, so you have two girls. I want to tell me how was how was it like? Uh, what was that experience like of finding out that you were going to be a father for the first time? You know, was that even the conception, was it planned or was it just like, hey, surprise? <laughs> no, they were they were both planned. Um, and they were both interesting in how I and how I found out the first time I found out Stacy uh Stacy surprised me when I came home with like this this bin and it's full of like baby roots and other like baby food type items. And so mm. uh that was how she told me. I was like, hey, by the way, we're pregnant, you know, congratulations. Um, when I found out that we were pregnant with Gabriella, um, it was a bit nerve wracking, exciting, right? It was, I was excited, but I was also scared, um, scared if I'd be, if I'd be able to live up to what it, what it means to be a father. Um, would I, would I be able to fulfill those duties the way that in my head, the way that I think I should. Um, and I think that's natural for people to kind of go through that fear. Mm -hmm. Um, 
I have, I've had that same fear. Uh, every time I get promoted in the military, I'm always afraid. Am I going to live up to the expectations of this next position? And being promoted a father is probably one of the, not probably, it is the greatest promotion that one could ever ask for, right? Is is the opportunity to shape and mold another person's life, right? Um, so yeah, so that's, that's probably the, the combination of feelings I had was excitement and fear slash nervousness. The fear and nervousness was would I be able to live up to what I expect um, of a father? So... Yeah. yeah, and and I think that fear comes on on both sides because I've I've had many dads, you know, having this conversation, and definitely that fear comes some because, uh, like myself, who was raised with my dad, right? So my, I was raised with my dad uh, and my mom until my mom passed away a couple of years ago, and uh, nine of us, I got eight eight siblings, right? So a big family. Um, so my my uh, example was there you know, with me being able to watch my dad raise my five sisters, you know, um, but a lot of times I have dads on who's on the other side of the spectrum where their dad wasn't active in their lives. And so it's even, I won't say more fearful, for, but just a different fear because they didn't have the example. So it's like, okay, will I be good enough? Or can I pull this off? Because my dad didn't pull it off, you know? And so as fathers, sometimes we have that, even though coming from different, um, backgrounds maybe is still that same fear of can we live up to be the not only the example that we may have seen but the example that we have in our minds like i want to be this great dad you know and there's so many uh so many aspects that goes into that right and so we uh, a lot of times have our own fears you know and our own pressure that we put on ourselves of of being this this great dad and some sometimes i think we all pull it off uh pretty good for the most part, <laughs> but I think it's natural for us to have that, that fear that maybe we might not, you know, we might not be good enough, but yet it's always, uh, uh, encouraging to see no matter what that fear is, we still step up to the plate, um, to, to handle it. And so, um, my next question for you is, you know, you have two daughters, and, you know, both of them, you know, definitely a blessing, like you said, and some, some, Fear along with it. Uh, how did you find out that they were going to be girls? Did you guys wait and do like the gen, uh, gender reveal thing, or did you guys just like, hey, surprise, or <laughs> you got girls now, you know? And then what was your, what was your expectation? And and I always like to ask ask this. I know we all want as fathers, you know, healthy babies, but there are some of us that's like, man, I can't wait to get that boy. And then you know, it's like, okay, so did you have any uh, hopes? of being a, a boy dad and then they was crashed, you know what I mean? Or it was just like, you know what, whatever comes. Uh, so it, it, it's different with both Gabriella and Olivia. So with Gabriella, um, both times we went and did the, the 3D, 4D ultrasound, uh, what, whatever that is. Uh, with Gabriella, uh, they told me what the gender was and I did the gender reveal for Stacy. And then with Olivia, they told Stacy what the gender was, and then Stacy did the gender reveal for me. Uh, so we have each had our turn, right? Uh, so with Gabriella, uh, they told me, and I guess I guess on the surface, I was slightly disappointed because I always imagined like my first child would be a boy. Um, so on the surface, maybe I was slightly disappointed, uh, but I very quickly got over it uh, and just mm -hmm. started embracing the fact that I was going to be a girl dad, and that's how it was going to be. Uh, I had. I had kind of an idea in my head on how to be a father to a boy. I had no idea in my head on how to be a father <laughs> to a girl, other than that I knew that I needed to be sweet, try to be nice, and try to set the example, right? These were the things that I knew I needed to do, and then try to be patient, uh, which is all just try, because I, I think we're all constantly trying to do, mm -hmm. do those things. We're never perfect at any of them, right? Um, so that so that was that was Gabriella. Uh, so state, uh, I surprised Stacy with... Uh, with a box full of balloons, we went out to the park and uh, I let her open the box full of balloons and one of them, you know, they were pink and blue and one of them was black and she popped the black balloon and then pink glitter spilled out everywhere. So that's how she found out that we were having Gabriella. Um, and then for Olivia, Stacy had been keeping it a secret pretty well. Uh, I've been trying to guess, trying to guess, trying to guess. And she kept on like dropping me hints that maybe we were having a boy. And so like, I got it in my head that I was like, I think she's trying to trick me. I think we're having another girl, right? And so she even, uh, she got the con little confetti cannons and on the bottom of them, they had the stickers, either blue or pink. Well, 
and I know she did this on purpose. Both of them had the blue sticker on the bottom. <laughs> so I was like, this, <laughs> that can't be, when I have twins, I know that's not the case, you know, and now I know she's trying to trick me. So now I, I'm pretty sure we're having a girl. So she took me and Gabrielle out to the park and then, uh, and then had us shoot off the confetti cans and, you know, the pink confetti went everywhere. And I was so excited. Um, and just, you know, two in a row. So that, that was amazing. And now, now that we have two girls, I can't imagine having a boy. Like, I, I'm sure there's, I'm sure there's dads out there that feel differently. Um, but if we were to have a third, I would, I just want another girl. I just want to be all girls, all girl dad all the way now. And it's so funny because that was not me growing up. You know, um, I'm even rocking a pink shirt. <laughs> so like, you know, this is how it goes. It changes you. It definitely changes you. Um, changes your whole perspective on the world just being a parent i think being a girl dad definitely changes your perspective on the world now there's times when like i'll see like a teenage girl and she's like dressed you know inconspicuously and like she's showing off her body i'm like man that's somebody's daughter you know mm -hmm. that's dressed like that I mean, somebody didn't help her out before she went out you know what i mean or i'll see somebody i'll see a young lady who's like down on herself i'll be like man that's 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 bad. I wish somebody could cheer her up and help her out because that's somebody's daughter and I would want somebody to help out my daughter. So yeah, it definitely yeah. changes your perspective on the world. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and that's going to lead to my next question, but I want to talk briefly about something that you just said, because I was a guest on a, on another podcast um, and it was all a uh, female panel, you know, and I was the only guy, uh, it's four ladies uh, that, that ran this other podcast and we we're talking about fatherless daughters. And one of the things, one of the stories that one of the young ladies told was a, a similar experience to, like you said, she said she was out with uh, a male friend of hers. You know, they are adults at this time and they're eating like at an outside cafe type uh, place. And so he's, he's sitting across from her. And so behind him coming towards her was a young lady um, and she was uh, loosely dressed should we say, you know? And so she said in her mind, when this young lady gets to where he can see, cause she can see him, she can see her, but he couldn't see her. So he, she said to herself, when he gets, when she gets to where he can see her, that he's going to be eyeing her kind of checking around and stuff. Right. And so she was just watching to see what his reaction would be to this young lady as she walked past. And she said, the young lady came, you know, walked past, he turned and looked at her, you know, and then he looked back, you know, at her. And what he said to her was, she must not have a daddy, you know. And the young lady who was telling the story, her father passed away when she was like four, I think she said. And so even at her age that she was then, I think she was a, probably in her early 20s or something like that. She was like, that made such an impact on her because she was like, I never want anyone to be able to look at me and tell that I didn't have my father, you know, in my life. Um, and so again, just going back to, like you said, seeing, you know, sometimes the young ladies, who, how they dress, how they carry themselves, or even, you know, where they are in their uh, self-esteem and things like that. Again, as a, as a father and definitely as an active girl, dad, father, you know, what's been missing. Cause you know, you know, from your experience of, you know, working with your own daughters and teaching your own daughters, like, yeah, he he missed this this important part, you know. And so that's why I even started the podcast because there's so many uh people that are just missing some things, you know. And that was kind of my my idea behind writing the four core. It's like I, I probably can't give you everything, but if we can get these four, these four core values, you know, to our daughters. And uh, even as women who may have grown up without their fathers, that you know what to expect, you know, that you maybe didn't get, but you now that you have this ebook, you can kind of know what's been missing, you know, what, what you missed on. And then there's a statistic that says most fatherless children will have fatherless children, right? Boys mm -hmm. or girls, you know? And so that being said, if you were to happen to have or be a parent of a fatherless child, you know, um, with this ebook, you know, at least the things that they 
you know, maybe missing where you can kind of make up for, you know, the best you can. And I, and I don't talk about it a lot in the ebook, but one of the things when I'm having these discussions with women, especially with fatherless daughters, I talk to them about actively looking for mentors for their daughters and their sons for that case. Because the thing, what I realized with the core four um, is as, as important as it is for our daughters is just as important for our sons you know, those same values, you know, is just as important. So I'm going to get off my soapbox because I'll be going down a whole nother road. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that just that when you mentioned that, it brought that back to my memory, you know, having that discussion uh, with that young lady. But um, I want to go back because you talked about, you know, your daughters. And one of my questions uh, is, what is something that your daughters have taught you? Because I know as we're pouring into our daughters, you know, uh, we don't know at all, you know, but as we pour into them, we realize, okay, there are some things that they're pouring back at us that we didn't realize that we needed, or, you know, just some new things that just open our eyes to some things. And so what has been something that, you know, your daughters have taught you? Uh, so there's a, there's a couple of things. And, and the first one is probably the biggest. Um, and so it, it's a little bit hard to talk about, um, but I'm going to talk about it anyways. So Gabriella was born with a brain injury. She spent 46 days in the NICU. Um, she has several, several challenges. She goes to PT mm-hmm. and OT every other week and speech therapy every single week. Um, so she's, she's dealing with some developmental delays. What that has taught me is the importance of slowing down and really enjoying the moments that you have and enjoying the time that you have. Um, because she, when she was born, she was taken to NICU within a matter of minutes and then transferred to a higher care level of care within a matter of hours. Um, and we spent the first night not knowing if she was going to be with us or not for the rest of our lives. So like that was, that was huge. Um, I was really, 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 really overworking at the time. Uh, of course, still in the military. I've been in the military for 21 years now, but in the position I was in, um, I was like the assistant to a commander. And I was really, like, really overworking. Like, I would work before I would show up for our workouts in the morning at 6.30. So I'd hit the office like 5 a.m., 5.30, start working. And then, uh, you know, we'd hit our workouts between 6.30 and 8 or whatever, wrap that up. I'd eat breakfast, shower, go right back to working. I'd work until 6.30, 7 o'clock at night. And then I'd leave and then I repeat the next day. Um, and so like, I, I think that was key. Like that, you know, I, I don't, I don't know how I would have reacted had she come out, I want to say perfectly healthy and normal. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know if I would have slowed down as much as I probably needed to. Uh, and yeah. so that, that definitely taught me the importance of like really slowing down, like really trying to focus and pay attention on those that you love. Uh, so that's the first thing. The second one, and I think this is something that we all struggle with, but I definitely, I definitely still struggle with that. I've struggled with my entire life. It's patience. I'm a very impatient individual, right? I'm a very impatient individual. And every single day, my daughters show me another way that I need to practice patience, whether it's with like trying to get the diaper off the baby and like trying to get her changed, but she's squirming. Like, okay, I, I know I can't be forceful with her because she's, she's a baby. Mm-hmm. And secondly, like, what would I expect to do if I was to, I'd probably do the same thing. You know what I mean? So, or like with Gabriella, like we're trying to explain something to her and like understanding that the way that I'm explaining it, she's not understanding it. And so like having the patience to, to take that in for a moment and ask myself, how can I change my approach so that she can understand the lesson I'm trying to teach her. And I'm not always the best at it. Stacy will tell mm-hmm. me, I can hear you from the other room. You're losing your patience. <laughs> like, yes, I know. And then she'll quite often, not quite often, not quite often, but sometimes she'll come in and basically save me. She'll be like, Gabriella, this is what he's talking about. Let me show you. I'm like, oh, thank goodness. You know, and so I, maybe in a third way, maybe that third lesson is the importance of partnership and, and teamwork with my spouse, you know. So really those three lessons are off the top of my head. And slowing yeah. down, patience, and the importance of teamwork. So yeah. And, and I think that that uh, you mentioned teamwork and I think that's uh, very important, especially in these in this climate, um, not only in your marriage, but in the co-parenting space. You know, it's very important that that we learn to work together, you know, um, and because this is one thing, again, talking to fatherless daughters. One of the things that uh, I talk to them about is a lot of times because you haven't had the the 
relationship with your father, you don't really know what you're missing or what you have missed out on, right? As being a daughter. And so in your mind is like, hey, I made it this far without him. You know, I'm good. And so when you get your children, sometimes you raise them with that same mindset. And it's like, no, there is a part that a father is supposed to play in your child's life. He's supposed to play it in your life. You know, it's unfortunate that he may not have, but you know, there's a part that he's supposed to play. And I always say it takes a man and a woman to create a child. And it also takes a man and a woman to raise a, uh, a health, healthy child, uh, naturally, emotionally, you know, with well balanced, right? It takes both parents in order to do that. And so definitely, I think that's a big thing in this uh, season of, of, you know, well, in, in any season, really, of with your mate, definitely being great parents, uh, if you're married, but also being able to co-parent if you're not, you know, if both parents are not together, you're still in this race, uh, if you want to call it a race, <laughs> you're still in this marathon, should I say, for the long haul, <laughs> you know, right. you, both, you both are in it, so you got to be able to work together. Um, so um, I have an, another question, this this question, and I, I talk about it from um it's two questions. It's two questions, right? And so I kind of talk about it from to for, from two ways. Um, so I'll just ask this first question. As a father thus far, what do you believe has been one of your greatest accomplishments as a dad? Mm. Greatest accomplishments as a dad. You know, I think it's... Um... I think it's taking Gabriella to like daddy daughter dances or like a, a you know, a military ball or, or something like that. And then her asking me like the next week or two weeks from the, after that, like when's the next daddy daughter dance or when's the next ball? Like the fact that my daughter wants to spend time with mm-hmm. me, I think it's a huge accomplishment. Right. Um, I think that's, I think that's huge. Is the fact that my daughter wants to spend time with me, uh, wants me around. And that, I think that says a lot. I think that's really special. So, yeah, yeah, and and that actually leads into my second question, right? Because <laughs> that's part of my story is when my daughter was younger, she had a daddy daughter dance, and I had to work, and so I said, well, I'll I'll miss this one and I'll catch the next one, right? And so as I mentioned earlier, my daughter's twenty one now, that never was the next one. Right. And so I missed that moment. You know, definitely we've had other moments, you know, in, in our years since then, but that moment I miss. And so that's always been something that I've uh, regretted, for lack of a better term. Uh, and on my own, she, I don't think it really bothers her at all, especially at this point, you know, um, but it's still something that I hold. And like I said, she's 21 and she probably was seven or eight at that time. And it's still, has a place in my heart. Like, okay, I still have to make up for that moment, you know? And like I said, I don't even think she, she cares. And she's like, yeah, whatever at this point, but it still, it still holds a space for me. And so my next question is, is just that, is there anything that, you know, as a father does far that you looked at and been like, you know what, I could have done this differently, or maybe I should have done you know, should not have done this, you know, something like, you know, that you may regret for lack of a better term, just like, uh, I should have done that a little differently. Yeah, there's, there's a couple of things. Uh, the first two that come to mind both have to deal with Gabriella. Um, so the first one is how I reacted and how I dealt with her being in the NICU for so long um, was that I, I turned to alcohol like hard. Um, I'd always been the casual drinker and, you know, I'd always enjoyed alcohol, but I turned to it very, very hard when she was in the NICU. And uh, I don't know, I don't know if I, I don't know if I truly understood the situation because I turned to alcohol to numb the pain and I definitely mm-hmm. didn't help my wife Stacy as much as I should have um, because of that. So that's, the, I'm sober now, but that's, so that's one. Um, another one is, I regret having to leave. So I had to leave for about eight months. It's only supposed to be six, but I had to leave for about eight months uh, to attend military school. And because of Gabriella's medical complications, she she and Stacy could have moved with us, but there's no guarantee that medical services were gonna be available in the area. So mm-hmm. they stayed behind. Um, 
you know, I, I probably could have got out of the military at that point and made the decision like, okay, I'm going to get out and we're going to find a job and work on the outside and do something different. Um, but a part of me regrets uh, leaving because there was a lot of, lot of trauma and a lot of hard things that Stacey and Gabrielle had to go through with medical issues and you know, surgeries and different things like that. And um, I wasn't there for that. And so Gabrielle and Stacy got a different kind of bond out of it obviously because it was you know a one-on-one bond a lot of one-on-one time and that's it's very different it's very special uh but it it took about i would say a year to a year and a half once we all were back in the same household before gabriella and i really had like what you would consider like a better or a stronger relationship and it took time um Mm -hmm. that's because i wasn't there for a lot of those pivotal moments so that's something i i kind of regret um a lot of people say it wasn't within my control it, it was, it was, I could have said, Hey, you know, I'm not going to do it. I'm just going to get out of the military, even though the, and the school is mandatory for me to progress, but I could have said, no, thank you. I'll get out. But, you know, I made the decision to continue on. And, uh, on some levels, I'm glad, I'm glad I did because now we're a stronger, tighter family unit. Um, but on some levels, I, I kind of regret that. So yeah. but who knows, who knows? I could have got out and, uh, got a job that didn't have, good health insurance and health coverage right. and it can be completely broke now. So yeah. who knows? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And the reason why I, I I like to I ask those questions because I I'd like for the podcast to be entertaining definitely, but also informative. And so my very first guest uh that I had on the podcast, I had him for a reason. So my very first guest is a friend of mine and he had just had his very first child and it was a girl. Right. And so he's new to fatherhood and new to uh, the girl dad, you know, space, too, at the same time. So I always kind of think of him as being not only the first guest, but my first listener. And so I always ask, you know, other dads, you know, the the questions that I feel that we can give some kind of information for dads like him who are just brand new on this journey. I think his daughter is like two months when we recorded his episode, you know, so he was like brand new, new, you know? And so I I like to ask those questions just so, you know, the younger fathers who may have not experienced, you know, may not have 21 years of experience of being a girl dad, you know, some of the things that they may be able to learn from us to not make some of the same mistakes that we made. So that's why I share that story of of me missing that, you know, uh, daddy daughter dance. You know, and because I want to share that same sentiment like you, like taking the time out to spend the time, you know, with with our families, you know, and with our daughters, especially with our daughters, because a lot of times we do have to work. A lot of times we are the main uh, breadwinners and, and we have to make those hard decisions. Like, do I go to work tonight or do I don't? You know, I, and there's never really a wrong or right answer. You know what I mean? Because even like you said, you could have got out, but then you could have had worse health care coverage. Right. You know what I mean? So it's, it's just the decisions that we have to make as, as fathers. Um, but I, I'd like to ask those questions because I want just to give our, our other girl dads like, all right, this is what you got to look forward to. And you can have these things in the back of your mind of, of what it's going to take and some of the decisions that, or and situations you may be in that you have to uh, you have to figure out. So. Yeah. Um, so we're going to jump into the next uh, part of our uh, the next segment of our podcast, which is called getting to the core segment. So to get into the core segment is a segment that kind of dives a little bit deeper into the ebook, the core four, which is the core four values that every daughter should get from her father. Um, to my listeners, again, you can get your copy of the core four at ebooks by ejames.com again that's ebooks by ejames.com uh, and so uh max i'm gonna ask you just uh two questions uh make it simple so the core four values uh that i believe is is four of the most important values that we can uh pour into our daughters is guidance affirmation love and affection and protection and so of those four, which one to you will probably be the most important uh, personally for you to pour into your daughters? 
Man, so I I just read it this afternoon. And I got to say, like, I love all four of those. All right, I, I think they're all four awesome. I sent you a text, even like, hey, this mm-hmm. is a great line on one of them. But really, the one that stands out to me the most is probably affirmations, and then and there's a specific reason why. So every single night when I put Gabriella to bed, I tell her, "You're strong, beautiful, and smart. You can do anything in this world if you put your mind to it. If you think it, and you believe it, you can achieve it." Right. And then I go on and on and on. It's about a, a minute and a half of affirmations. I tell her before the last thing she hears before she goes to sleep every single night. And the reason for that is I, I didn't have a lot of confidence as a child growing up. And I want her to have so much confidence in who she is and what she's capable of doing. So there's that one. That's Gabriella. And then for Olivia, Olivia, I, I sing her. There's this chorus. And it's a song by Luke Combs. And it's called Five Leaf Clover. I sing it to her every single night before she goes to bed. Um, and the gist of it is, is that I'm so lucky to be your father, right? And that's just, it, it's a different kind of affirmation, but it's me telling her, mm-hmm. me affirming to her that I love her and that I am lucky to be her father, right? And so do you need to parent your children differently? Yeah, I, I think you do. And uh, do, do the four core values stand out differently per child? Yeah, I think they will. And uh, that's my example of how, how like affirmation stands out differently for my two daughters right now. And it's probably going to change over time. Right. But yeah. that's how it is right now. So. I, lo- I love it. I love it. And I was going to, I was going to point that out too, that even um, you even being able to say, okay, this is going to be different for, for one daughter. And this is how I'm going to uh, speak to my other daughter, just noticing those um, that they need different things. You know what I mean? I think that's important. I was going to point that out and you pointed it out yourself, but yeah, definitely as, as fathers, we have to be able to do that too, because all of our children are not the same. Again, I come from a family of, of nine siblings, right? I have five sisters, I have three brothers, right? And just going with the boys, just four of us and each one of us is different. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. <laughs> four different personalities. And then when I think about it, even with my father and my mom, you got nine kids. That's nine different personalities that you got to kind of mold each one of them differently. Uh, and so, yeah, we do have to uh, pay attention to that. So my my next question is going to be, um, the ebook is called The Four Core, and it's the four core values. But if there could be a fifth value, that you could add, what would that fifth one be? Mm. I, presence, maybe it's presence, mm-hmm. right? Um, and and I don't know if this ties in, maybe maybe ties in with one of the other four core values. But in my own way, in my own words, just being present in their lives, and that means different. It can mean different things for different people, but like any any time that I get the opportunity, if there's an appointment or if there's a dance or if there's a show or whatever it is, I'm taking off and I'm going to be there. Every single time that I get the chance to be there, I'm going to be there because I know there's going to be times when I can't, right? Like Mm -hmm. as you look around, I'm in a hotel room because I'm traveling for work right now. So there's going to be times when that that time's going to be taken away from us and we're not going to have a choice. So anytime I have the choice and I could choose my family or something else, my daughter or something else, I'm gonna choose my daughter. Um, and that's gonna mean certain things sometimes. Sometimes it's gonna mean I don't have deep friendships with some men because I don't go out or I don't go to the house or I don't go drink it because I'd rather be home on a Friday night with my family. Um, or it might mean that I get passed over for certain jobs or positions or promotions because I chose to go do something with my family instead of staying at work late, for example. So it's, it's something that I I think is going to matter more 15, 20 years from now is being present in their lives than being present in other places will matter. So, especially at this point in my career. So, yeah, 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 I love it. I love it. And, and I can tell you as a, as a dad, uh, you mentioned it earlier when you were talking that one of the things that you love is that your daughter wants to spend time with you. Right. And so I can tell you as a dad, uh, when my, again, my daughter being 21 now, not that she doesn't want to spend time with me, but she's a young adult now, you know, so she has her own life, her own ideas, you know, her own job to go through and, and things like that. And so there will come a time when um, not saying that she won't want to spend time with you, but her life will 
cause her to spend more time away from you as she, she grows older. And so we definitely want to make sure, again, like you said, taking out that time to be there now, because even as an adult, those times that we cultivate now with our daughters at our at their younger ages is what they're going to remember most when they're going through life's challenges as young adults and 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 as they get older so uh definitely th that presence and being there and make sure that we're taking out that time um is important i want i want to mention one more thing um before we get out of here <clears throat> excuse me you mentioned about uh you text me you know your some of your thoughts about the ebook um um the four core and one of the things that you kind of touched on a little bit was the poor four right we mm -hmm. I talked about that so one of the things for my listeners one of the things that I talk about in the ebook uh the core four is there is an opposite called the poor four right and the poor four will be these these uh traits that your daughter may pick up or may attract um, if she is not given the core four values, right? And so just for one example, you know, we talk about guidance um, being one of the core four, where the opposite of the core four being the poor four would be instead of a, a guy who's guiding, who's, you know, gives some kind of guidance, you have a guy who's controlling, right? And if we don't, guide our daughters, uh, you know, throughout their lives, they may be attracted to guys who are controlling because they're looking for that guidance because they don't really know what that looks like. And so uh, just share with me, share with my listeners, should I say, a little bit of your ideas um, that you text me about, even with considering those poor for um, that kind of struck a chord with you. Yeah. So w when I read through the poor for, uh, it, it hurt. It it hurt. Like it hurt to read those things, because uh, it's it's true. Those those things are definitely out there. Those type of men are definitely out there, and uh, you you know you don't really. I guess maybe you do, but it, it, unless you slow down and take the time to think about it, you don't really think about like the impact that your presence missing would have, right? And so mm -hmm. when I read through that, I was like, wow. Like, you know, I I think that I'm trying to set a good example. I'm trying to do all these things for my daughters already, but like, imagine if I wasn't here, yeah. what the flip side of that would be. And so like, it, it just, for me, it gave me that much more motivation to try to set a good example and try to be the best version of myself that I can be for them. Um, because if I'm not, then what happens later on in life when they try to replace what was missing? And I don't want them to ever end up with any of those, anybody with any of those four poor values ever, right. ever. So like when I read through that, I was like, man, that, it hurts to hurts to read that because it's that's definitely true. There's definitely people out there like that, and uh, it's nothing I ever want for my daughters. So, yep, yep, exactly, exactly. So, Max, again, man, I thank you so very much uh, for coming on and sharing your story and your expertise as a father. And again, I thank you for your service. Um, I want you to have the last word. I want you to leave us with um, a word of advice uh, for our fathers or. Uh, motivation, however you feel, uh, just a, a word for our fathers uh, that may be listening, or even for our daughters who may be listening uh, at the same time. And and also share your social media uh, handles where we can follow you. And, and I'll give you a, a couple of seconds to think about that. Uh, to my listeners, I want to tell you guys, uh, thank you guys for tuning in to the Girl Dad Discussions podcast. And also, if you guys like this podcast and you've thought about starting your own podcast, you can get the ebook, Start Your Podcast Now, um, which tells you how to start your own podcast in only three simple steps. Uh, I wrote this ebook because I was constantly getting asked how to start a podcast and, and over, over helping uh, many people start their own podcast. I wrote the ebook to make it really simple. So if you thought about starting your own podcast, you can go to ebooksbyejames.com. Uh, and get your copy of the Start Your Podcast Now ebook. So make sure that you guys take advantage of that. Also, make sure that you guys check us out on our uh, on my main website, which is the dealhealfulfill.org website, because my mission personally is to help people to deal, heal, and fulfill, to deal with your problems, to heal from the pain, and to fulfill your purpose. And so I do that in several different ways. 
uh, with podcasting and writing and also in public speaking. So make sure you guys go to the deal heal fulfill.org. Again, that's deal heal fulfill.org and check out my main website uh, that tells you about me and what I have going on. And also you can book me to come to be a speaker or to facilitate a workshop at your uh, school or organization. So again, go check us out uh, at that website. Also, again, ebooksbyejames.com where you can get uh, your copy of the core four ebook as well as the Star Joe podcast uh, ebook. But there's also two other ebooks that I have there, which is From Males to Men, which is a male mentoring ebook. And then there is another ebook called Forgiving Me the Four Steps to Self Forgiveness. So make sure you guys go to ebooks by ejames.com in order to check out uh, the ebooks that we have there and check out our merch. We have podcast merch and we have inspirational teas on our inspirational T line, which is the deal to heal tease.com deal the number two heal tease.com put some inspiration in your situation wear an inspirational tea and be inspired all day make sure you guys go there to check out our inspirational teas and also our t-shirts with our logos for our podcast on there you guys can check that out as well last but not least the last couple of years, I've been blessed to be a part of an organization called the Forgiveness Mission. And what we do, we have free virtual workshops every other month. We used to have them every quarter of the year. Now we have them every other month. And we talk about everything around forgiveness, forgiveness of self, forgiveness of others, what it means to forgive, who is forgiveness for, uh, just an all around conversation about forgiveness. Um, these Again, these are free virtual workshops. So whenever you're listening to this podcast, even uh, either a, a workshop just ended or a workshop is coming up. So you guys can go to forgivenessmission.com and look up to see when is the next free virtual workshop that you can take part of, or you can go to Eventbrite and look up forgiveness workshop held by the forgiveness mission in order to take part in the, that free uh, virtual workshop. So uh, definitely something I'm very passionate about. So make sure you guys go and check that out. So uh, again, Max, thank you so very much for being on. Thank you for sharing your story and your expertise. I want you to have the last word. So the floor is yours. Yeah. So you asked me if there's any advice I give uh, dads, young dads, girl dads, period. Uh, so two things. Number one, if at any are any chance, anytime you have the opportunity to choose your family over something else, choose your family over whatever else it is. If it's going out with the guys, if it's something for work, what whatever it is, choose your family over that. And then the second thing is, is just, just to remember that your children only want the absolute best possible relationship with you. Um, and I don't know if there's any other person on this planet from birth that wants that and they want it with you, right? You meet people all day long, uh, all throughout your life that want different things from you. And quite often it's not just have the best possible relationship with you. That's what your children want. So try to keep that in mind. I definitely try to keep that in mind and it helps me center myself quite often. So, yeah, so those were my two pieces of advice. And then you asked me for social media handles. So uh, on Instagram, it's it's there in the text, but it's Mad Max Fitness 84. On TikTok, it's also Mad Max Fitness 84. On YouTube, it's Mad Max Fitness 84. And on Facebook, this one that's different right now, it's Mad Max Fit Fam, F-I-T-F-A-L. So Mad Max Fit Fam on Facebook. All right, all right. We can't end to no better than that. To my listeners, thank you guys once again for tuning in to the Girl Dead Discussions podcast, where we believe that the relationship between a father and his daughter is one of the most important relationships in a young lady's life. So until next time, you guys be blessed. Thanks for listening to the Girl Dead Discussions podcast with E. James. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and subscribe to our podcast on all your podcast listening platforms. Also, don't keep it to yourself, but share it with someone else that the Girl Dad Discussions podcast is on the air. Until next time, be blessed.